Hello, and welcome back to the Yogi Collection. I'm Yogi, your curator for today, and I'll be taking you through the interesting world of Lego collectibles. I love collecting stuff. I have a huge assortment of Lego dating back to the late 90s, and currently I've been stocking up on a bunch of Hot Wheel die cast and other 164 from other vendors. And today we're going to shift gears to Lego and talk about one of my favorite drivers of all time, Ayrton Senna. But I'm going to do things a little bit differently this time. Instead of showing you a fully assembled model, I'm going to put you guys on time lapse so that while I'm building this thing, we can talk about the history of this car, the history of Ayrton Senna's legacy, and the period when this car was at its peak. If this is your first time visiting the Yogi Collection, welcome. Be sure to check out my other curations, such as Formula One, Majorette, and of course, my Liberty Walk. And if you like video content like this, be sure to hit that subscribe button and the like button and leave a comment below. It goes a long way to help the channel and guess what? It doesn't cost you anything, but can really help the channel. So we really appreciate your support. And with that, welcome to the show. For the past few months, I've been dedicated to presenting a whole bunch of 164 and 143 size models from Hot Wheels, Matchbox, Majorette, and then of course Formula One. So my desk needs a little bit of cleanup here and we need to switch gears back to crafting so I can get ready for the assembly of this model. If you're a regular on this show, then you know I've been trying out some stop motion technology to kind of spice up my videos. So that's what you're seeing here is uh, a faux stop motion attempt. This set was released this year in March and is selling for $79.99 US dollars. And the set number is 10330 with a total item count of 693 pieces. And if you're good with the math, then that comes out to almost 12 cents a piece. Not exactly a value, but after I show you the history of this car and driver, you'll understand why this will be an ultimate collectible. Inside the building instructions is a brief introduction to the designer of this set, as well as the driver, Ayrton Senna, and his history in motorsports. Definitely worth a read, and these instruction booklets are not meant to be tossed away, folks, so if you own one of these, keep it. Okay, let's start the conversation with Ayrton Senna. Ayrton Senna da Silva was a Brazilian racing driver who is widely considered one of the greatest Formula One drivers of all time. And if you think about that statement, I'm basically saying that he is up there with some of the greats like Juan Manuel Fangio, Jackie Stewart, Michael Schumacher, all of these names, Ayrton Senna belongs in that conversation. He won three Formula One World Championships for McLaren in 1988, 1990, and 1991. He's renowned for his prowess in driving in wet conditions, his fierce competitiveness, and his compassionate personality off the track. Unfortunately, his life was tragically cut short on May 1st, 1994 during the San Marino Grand Prix at the Imola Circuit in Italy. On lap 7, Senna's car went off the track at high speed at the Tamburello corner, hitting the concrete retaining wall. The cause was a tragic combination of a possible steering column failure and the high speed nature of the turn. He was estimated to be traveling around 190 to 200 miles per hour. And later, when I show you the construction and the safety components of this car, you'll understand why he never had a chance. Senna's death was a wake-up call for Formula One. It led to a massive overhaul of safety regulations, including improvements to the track, the cars, and the helmets, as well as the establishment of the FIA Expert Advisory Safety Committee. Senna's legacy went beyond his driving skills. He was passionate about improving the sport's safety, and his death galvanized those efforts. While he was alive, his charitable work and humility also left a lasting impression on fans and communities worldwide. And in Brazil, he's up there with God himself. And I'm not exaggerating. And here's the first bit of controversy about this particular build. Yes, Lego made this tire element specifically for this build. 
However, they did not differentiate the rear and front tires with at all. So they're basically four of the same tire. I'm gonna be doing another video where I'm gonna 3D print, rubber 3D print, new tires for the rear to fix this issue. So be sure to stay tuned for that and subscribe. I'm not gonna bore you throughout the video showing me sort Lego. I just wanna do it this one time, I'll speed it up, here we go. And we're gonna really just talk about the minifig here because this is the big selling point for the set. And as your curator, it's my job to tell you what is valuable in the set. So although this set isn't scaled to the minifigure, it did come with the quintessential part of the entire set, the Ayrton Senna minifig. And you can see that it's fully adorned in his livery. His legs are painted as well as he's equipped with white gloves, indicating that he is wearing his complete fire suit. The big selling point here is going to be that helmet. That is a one of helmet. You won't see that on any other set ever made by Lego unless it's another Ayrton Senna set. So that right there pays for this entire set in the near future when it's retired. And for those of you who may not be aware of the investment properties of Lego, it's been quoted in some trade magazines as well as uh, some financial analysts that investing in Lego is sometimes more valuable than investing in gold. And this set selling for $79.99 now, I would anticipate it at least doubling the moment it is retired. During the COVID lockdown, I, like many others out there, lost their jobs. So in order to make ends meet, I started to sell off some of my collection of Lego. And that's how I know what the value of this is. I have an open store on Bricklink and I do a lot of business with people here in the local community trying to shore up my collection that I had to sell off. So I have a deep understanding of the Lego secondary market. Next up, I had to build the podium for the Ayrton Senna minifig, and it includes a placard with a quote from Ayrton Senna that I'll read now. And yes, I do use tweezers to apply my stickers. I find it to make me more accurate when I'm applying it, as well as it keeps my greasy fingers from messing up the sticker. So the quote is, no matter what your dream is, you have to dedicate yourself entirely to it. And I think that's a great attitude to have, really. The only way you can be the best is to have complete and utter dedication. Elements were included so that you had something to hang your helmet on. I prefer to hang my hair on that and wear the helmet. And also it includes a generic trophy with a little square base that's not depicted there yet. All right, next up, we're gonna be building the floor of the vehicle as well as the engine. And for those of you who watched my Formula One video, you'll know that there are different eras in Formula One. And this particular one is from the turbo era. The turbo era is from 1983 to 1988. The key characteristics of it, it is a smaller displacement engine, typically a V6 with a turbocharger. Power levels reached unprecedented levels, leading to concerns over safety and costs. In qualifying trim, these turbocharged engines could produce power in excess of 1,000 horsepower. This led to the FIA capping boost levels and eventually banning turbo engines in 1989. This is one of my favorite parts of the build, and it's an Easter egg. And if you're unfamiliar with the colors of the Brazilian flag, yes, that is the Brazilian flag hidden deep in the model. Very cool. Now, not to be outdone by the engine's performance, the aerodynamics of this MP44 were state of the art. The car featured a low and wide stance with side pod designs to channel air efficiently around the car, reducing drag and increasing downforce. Nerd alert! Ah, uh, see, I knew I was gonna trigger nerd alert once I got into aerodynamics. Yeah, this is the part of my video where I deep dive into some specifics around whatever we're talking about. In this case, it's aerodynamics. Yes, I know my whole video is sort of a nerd alert, but now we're gonna get nerdier -er, er So here we go. Years earlier, Mario Andretti coined a phrase, more downforce and less drag. And when you think about that on its surface, it sounds implausible. But in 1988, McLaren did just that. They leveraged ground effect aerodynamics, Venturi tunnels, they designed side pods 
to work in harmony with the floor and they channeled the air around the side of the car effectively, which then interacted with the floor's aerodynamics, creating downforce. There, that wasn't so bad. Okay, I'm just gonna speed this up just a little bit. We're just doing some structural stuff. And here is the engine. You can see it's a six cylinder engine. I think those two chrome macaronis are supposed to be part of the exhaust system. I could be wrong. Leave a comment down below. Okay, we're moving on to bag two. And by the way, from this point forward, there won't be any background audio. I was watching a few documentaries while I was building to keep my mind occupied. And uh, so I didn't want to play that for you here. <laughs> All right, next up is rear suspension. And it requires four of these triangular shaped elements. And here's a little trivia for you. The name of the element is Technic Steering Arm Triangular with two axles and tow ball socket. How did that not trigger the nerd alert? Hmm. And this suspension is designed for stability at high speeds and not comfort. The stiff setup necessary for competitive racing meant drivers felt every bump and vibration, compounding the physical demands on the driver's body. Okay, we're gonna book it here and get to the rest of the engine build. But before I do, I wanted to take this time again to ask if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to my channel if you like this kind of content. If you don't, leave a thumbs down, but tell me why. Any type of engagement will help me enter the YouTube algorithm and it's beneficial for me and for my channel. Appreciate it, thanks. In these last 11 seconds, I'd also like to promote my other channel, Yogi's Garage, where I work on actual cars, and in particular Porsches, so I have a Porsche 996 that I'm currently working on. I think that was more like 13 seconds. Okay, here we are, the most important parts of the engine, the turbochargers. If these were any other color, they would be a fire extinguisher, but here in the chrome finish, they look like little turbochargers, kinda cool. Here's another little shout out to Brazil, Ayrton Senna's home country. I really enjoy these types of little Easter eggs. If you've ever built a Lego brick head, there's always a brick two by two in pink, and I'm guessing that's to depict the brain. Okay, now the body of the car is really starting to come together. We've got the shell livery, including the shell symbol. Uh, the colors are red and white here, which are Marlboro colors. I'm gonna talk more about that later, but just so you know. Okay, we're on the third bag out of six total. Usually the sixth bag is for the stand, and I think that's the case here. So there's really only two more bags left after this one. And in this bag, it's more of the same. We're gonna be doing the front suspension. So as I'm building this part of the model at 2000X, I figured I'd share a little bit more information on Ayrton Senna. Senna had a remarkable ability to memorize circuits and could drive laps almost blindfolded. Senna's mental map of racetracks was so detailed that he could recall every bump and turn with precision. And if you think about that, can you imagine the advantage he would have in low visibility situations? Crazy. Although this model isn't scaled to a minifigure, they did put some playability including this steering mechanism, so that's nice. As I finished building out the cockpit area, I figured I'd share some information about what it was like for a driver of this era to sit in one of these things. During Senna's era, the cockpit was minimalistic and focused on functionality. The cockpit was relatively open, which unfortunately contributed to higher risks during accidents. The tragic incident leading to Senna's death at Imola in 1994, as I mentioned, was a catalyst for major safety reforms in Formula One. And for those of you wondering, yes, carbon fiber was used throughout this era. All right, moving on to bag four. We're gonna be working on the rear wing and the diffuser, and the diffuser is up first. Most of the diffuser is underneath the vehicle, but some of the elements are depicted here. Now, the diffuser works with the aerodynamics package on the car, and it helps expand the air back to atmospheric pressure, which then creates sort of a suction flow underneath the car and increases the downforce even further. This is one of several of Ayrton Senna's personal sponsors and he was known to wear their watches. TAG has a strong heritage in motorsports and has had various partnerships and sponsorships within Formula One over the years. They also have released several special edition watches in honor of Senna throughout the years. And here's the complete cockpit for Senna. And yeah, you'll notice that there is no halo 
over his head, so his head was poking out of the top. There are two levers on either side of him. The one on the left is for shifting the gears of the transmission, and the one on the right has a multi-purpose. It could be for adjusting the anti-roll on the car, adjusting the brake balance, and manual adjustments of the suspension. All of which is done from the steering wheel in the modern era. So think about that for a second. You have one hand holding the steering wheel while you're shifting gears in speeds of around 200 miles an hour, and then when you're coming around on a turn and you want to adjust your brake balance, you have to switch hands and use the other hand to adjust the brake balance right before you come into the apex of the turn. Wow. All right, I'm starting to work on the front wing. And as we all know, the front wing is a crucial part of the aerodynamics package of any Formula One car. Now, in this period, it was pretty simple and compared to the modern era where they have all types of aerodynamic redirection going on from the front. But here, its main purpose was to direct air around and under the vehicle to create the downforce necessary to stabilize the car in high-speed turns. As far as the model is concerned, you can see here that LEGO is trying really hard to create that cone-shaped nose that was so famous for this McLaren model. The other driver who tragically lost his life during the San Marino Grand Prix weekend in 1994 was Roland Ratzenberger. He was an Austrian Formula One driver who died during the qualifying session of the day before Senna's fatal accident. These two tragic events led to the increased focus on safety. Aerodynamic downforce was reduced to lower cornering speeds, leading to changes in front wing design to comply with new regulations. It's just sad to think that tragic events are the only thing that tends to move the needle in safety when it comes to Formula One. Or at least that's the way it used to be during this period. And you know, I really shouldn't say that because when the halo was being introduced, there was a lot of controversy and pushback around implementing the halo, particularly with Toto Wolff, the CEO of Mercedes AMG Patronus. Later, he's regretted his decision, but at the time he was not for the halo. But after what happened to Hamilton where the tire skidded across the halo and missed his head, he quickly changed his tune. As we continue to work on the rear wing, I'm going to tip my hat to Lego here for depicting the gunnery flap accurately on the back of the spoiler. That little raised lip is what you call the gunnery flap or wicker ball and its sole purpose was to increase the efficiency of the airfoil. Okay, we've made it to bag five now and we're going to be working on the intake manifold here. I love the fact that Lego always includes detail that you're not going to see at the surface. You'll have to pull the top off to see this, but this is the intake manifold and it is really awesome. Okay, I'm going to continue to build the cover for the engine and while I'm building it, I'll give you some more Ayrton Senna trivia. Like for example, did you know that Ayrton Senna held a deep spiritual belief that often influenced his racing style? Senna once said that he found God while pushing his car to the limit describing experiences where he felt a profound sense of peace and concentration beyond normal levels, particularly during his pole lap at the 1988 Monaco Grand Prix, which he qualified a staggering 1.4 seconds faster than his teammate. I don't know about you, but if I drove a car at 200 miles an hour, it would put the fear of God in me too. Okay, we're getting ready to mount all four wheels. But before I give you the final reveal on this car, I wanted to talk to you about the livery and some of the controversy. For many years, Formula One teams had significant sponsorship deals with tobacco companies. These partnerships led to iconic liveries like Marlboro, Camel, Lucky Strike, and my personal favorite livery, John Player Special. I mean, look at that, black and gold, come on. However, the prominence of tobacco company logos on these cars became a point of contention as public health campaigns against smoking gained momentum. Over time, regulations began to change both within countries and within the sport itself. Many governments enacted laws to restrict tobacco advertising and Formula One eventually followed suit, leading to the gradual disappearance of tobacco sponsorships from the cars. Now, don't think that that completely eliminated sponsorships. For many years, and they're still doing it, many tobacco companies are hiding their sponsorships through shell companies, different strange name companies. Let me know in the comments below if you'd like me to touch on that in a separate video. Okay, I'm wrapping up this build with the stand and they include this nice placard sticker that is the piece of resistance or piece de resistance. It gives you the specs of this constructor's championship vehicle and the year it was constructed. Nice touch. 
I think Lego should include more stands like this. I really do appreciate the 45 angle display that it puts this car in and it leaves enough room so that you can put the podium right next to it. All in all, I would rate this build as fun, but most importantly, what you all are here to find out is whether or not this set is a collectible. Let me just tell you profoundly, yes. This set is an absolute must buy. Have one on display and keep one or two or three in the back closet so when they retire this set, you can sell them and help keep the lights on in your house or buy, take your wife out to dinner or something. In addition, for me personally, as a avid F1 fan and the tremendous amount of respect I had for Ayrton Senna, Lego really knocked it out of the park aside for the wheel issue, which I'm gonna fix later in a video, this model will stand proudly next to my other ones representing Formula One. Okay guys, this about concludes my presentation for you today. Remember, if you like videos like this, please hit the thumbs up or the subscribe button. It really goes a long way to help the channel. And with that, the collection is closed.